We now bring you Prove All Things with Dathan Bodie. Good morning. Welcome to another segment of the program, Prove All Things. By way of introduction, my name is Dathan Bodie. I serve as the minister for the Church of Christ, which meets in Rockingham, North Carolina. We also gladly invite you to our weekly services. Our times of services are Sunday morning Bible studies, 10 a.m., Sunday morning worship service, 11 a.m., Sunday evening worship service, 6 p.m., and midweek Bible studies, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We are located on 1013 Wild Cherry Avenue, Rockingham, North Carolina, 28379, directly across the street from Godfather's Pizza and diagonally from Family Dollar. We are delighted and always excited to 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 bring this program to you and let me remind you the purpose of this program is a call for the return to the bible it's a plea for new testament christianity it is a restoration call so as we present this program to you keep in mind that we our objective is to go back to the Bible. Friends, if the things that that you hear on this program appear to be foreign and alien to you, I want to assure you it is from God's Word. And I always challenge you to to have pen and paper, to jot down this information, and to go back over it and to review it at in the comfort in the privacy of your home. The Church of Christ, which re which meets at Rockingham, also offer a a free in-home Bible studies by mail. You can request this by simply calling 910-895-4035, 910-895-4035. We'd definitely be looking forward to hearing from you, and please leave your name and address slowly that we can get back with you at our earliest opportunity. You can also visit us on our website at www.rockinghamchurchofchrist.com. You could also visit us on our Facebook page. We are always, always, uh, uh, we always welcome our community to 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 see what we are all about. Come visit with us, or again, you can. Look online, and you can see us on our website. This is a wonderful day, because this is the day that the Lord has made. It is a wonderful day. David said that I will rejoice and be glad in it. The first day of the week was the day in which creation was commenced. And also the first day of the week was the day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came out of the grave. The first day of the week is also the day that our Lord and Savior had appointed us to partake in the Lord's Supper in remembrance of his death. The first day of the week was the time the Bible recorded when the disciples came together after the, re after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The first day of the week also, Acts chapter 2 was the day in which the Lord's church came into existence upon the earth. So this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and definitely be glad in it. We thank God for blessing us uh, to be here on this morning. And, I, and I, again, I thank you, the listening audience, for, 
for tuning in Sunday morning after Sunday morning to this program. We have been getting some some positive feedback from our our community. Again, those who are those who are listening, we thank you so much for tuning in to this program. Again, this program is an appeal for New Testament Christianity to move away from all of the hoopla, to move away from all of the entertainment, and to move away from all the religious hypocrisy. We are here to present God's Word and God's Word alone. I do believe that God's Word in itself is exciting enough to move the human heart to change one's life. You see, friends, whenever we are engaged in gymnastic or religious gymnastic, we have to keep on up in the ante. You see, we have to keep on doing more and more and more to keep others engaged. But God's word is sufficient to keep us engaged. The Bible says that that God's word is quick and powerful and sharper than two any, uh, any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder of soul and, and spirit. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says that God's word is spirit. God's word is lively. It's full of life. Therefore, we are to appeal only to God's word as we, as we search, as we search out the things pertaining to, to life and to godliness. On this morning, we want you to talk a little about, about the topic of apostleship. Apostleship. You see, there are, there are some out there who call themselves apostles of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So on this morning, I want to address the, the biblical definition of the word apostle. I also want to address the qualification of that office. And I also want to address the characteristic or the characteristics of an apostle. If you were to open your, your yellow pages on this morning in the religious section, you would discover that there are those out there who are calling themselves apostle. Apostle John Brown, Apostle John Doe. Friends, yes, it is easy to, to grab a name and, and to slam it and uh, grab a title and slam it in front of your name. Uh, it, it, yes, we can, we can make ourselves appear as religious as possible. But friends, there must be a thus said the Lord concerning whatever we do. There must be, if there is not, I appeal to you to abandon all such teachings. There are some out there who call themselves apostles, or they call themselves apostles of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, the Bible sets the guideline on who is eligible or qualify to become an apostle of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First, the word apostle means one who is sent. It means one who is sent. Now, generically, it is anyone who is sent, can be considered an apostle. But what we want to look at, we want to look at the religious authority for what we do. If one call himself an apostle of Jesus Christ, it means that he must be sent specifically by Jesus to accomplish the task of apostleship. Now, yes, generally, all Christians, generally, all Christians are sent. So the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That is the duty of every faithful Christian. So yes, in a simplistic way, but we are talking about the office of apostleship. You see, what Jesus did, 
Jesus appointed his apostles by name, not by uh, not by a generic uh, um, implication, but he he sent his apostles specifically by name. Therefore, an apostle is one who is sent by Jesus. He is selected by name. He is called specifically by Jesus. It was an office created by Christ himself. While on earth, Jesus selected 12 men to hold this divinely appointed office. These 12 men were selected by name. Join me. Turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, and I'll commence reading from about verse 1. Again, this is Matthew, chapter 10, commencing from verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Verse 2. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. You got it, friends? Jesus, appoint, he appointed his apostles specifically by name. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Verse 5, these twelve Jesus sent forth. You see, uh, friends, the Bible is specific in its teaching. Now, if your name or, or a so-called apostle who called himself apostle, if his name is not numbered among these twelve, we can start to believe that there is something wrong. There is something wrong with this teaching or with this theology. Now, we also know that the Apostle, the Apostle Paul was also, he was also selected after the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul, he said himself that he was one that was, that was appointed. He was one who was born out of, out of due season. He said that he was selected after, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We can see that story in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul said that in verse 2, he said, If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. His seal of apostleship was the church at Corinth. That was a seal of his apostleship. We see that Paul was appointed on the road of on the road to Damascus by Jesus himself this is out of Acts chapter Acts chapter 9 and Paul rehearsed the same story in Acts chapter 22 so Paul was also called by name out of Galatian the book of Galatians if we look at verse uh, chapter 1 citing verse 11 and 12 the apostle said but I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither receive it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
So the, the, the appointment of being an apostle is one that, that came directly from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what I can assure you, friends, is that those who call themselves apostles today, they were never called directly by name. They were never called by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because the call has already gone out, and the door to that office has already been shut. What we have in our possession is the writings of the apostles as were given by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Paul, the same apostle, said out of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter 2, here is the apostle Paul, and Paul said out of chapter 3, out of Ephesians, Paul said in verse 1, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Paul said the revelation has already gone out. It was given by the apostles. The apostles pen it, and we have it for posterity. So, friends, the the uh, the the an apostle was appointed by name by our Lord Jesus Christ to fulfill a specific role, and the tw the apostles had already fulfilled that role. We have <clears throat> we have an another we have another appointment. We have another appointment of the apostle who took Judas' place. We have here, out of Acts chapter chapter 1, and I'll begin, I'll commence reading. I'll start at verse 23. The apostles assembled themselves together to replace Judas, who had betrayed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was necessary. And so they convened for this purpose in verse 23 of Acts chapter 1, and they appointed two, Joseph called Basibus, who was surnamed Justice, and met Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the heart of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. Again, they are, they are appealing to God. They have two candidates that they presented, and they appeal to God for God to select which one would replace Judas. And God would select by name. Verse 25, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they give forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So he made the twelfth apostle, he replaced Judas. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we see also that Paul, God, Jesus selected Paul on the road to Damascus. And then Paul said in, in chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians, Paul affirmed his apostleship. He said his apostleship was by power as, as a demonstration of power among the the, the Corinthians. So friends, the definition of an apostle is one who is sent by Jesus, not just one who is generically sent, but one who is selected by name for this specific office. If you were not selected by name for this specific office, then my friends, you are not an apostle. I'm talking to those who 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 assume this name falsely, who just select this name for themselves without proper authorization of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I, I, I tell you, it's too late. It is too late. You are, you are about 2,000 years too late in being named or self, a self-proclaimed an apostle. Now here, let's, let's look at, we look at the, the definition, one who was sent. We look at those who were sent, they were selected by name, and their names were penned in the scriptures. 
So in order to determine who is an apostle or not, we go to the scriptures. If we go to, if we appeal to the scriptures, the scriptures, friends, is almost 2,000 years old. And if your name is in this, in this, in this Bible, specifically referring to you, then you must be a pretty old person. Let's look at the qualifications of an apostle. As I did before in reference to an elder, uh, a, a, a pastor, and a bishop, I will likewise do this morning in reference to the office of an apostle. Turn with me to, to Acts. To Acts, Acts of the Apostles. We'll be looking at chapter 1, verses 20 through 22. <clears throat> that is Acts chapter 1, verses 20 through 22. Read with me. For it is written, this is Peter speaking, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate. He is going through the process of selecting another person to select, to, to sorry, to, to, uh, to fill the space of Judas who betrayed Jesus. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric, or his office, let another take. In reference to Judas. Peter saying this is a prophecy. Verse 21. Wherefore, of these men, which, we ha which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Now, Peter said the first qualification of an apostle. Here's the qualification that, Paul, that Peter gives. Peter said that. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Here he goes in verse 22, beginning from the baptism of John. Peter saying that in order for one to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, here is, here is the qualification. Here is the qualification. One must have been with Jesus and the apostles, beginning from the baptism of John. Now, again, if you are called an apostle, friends, and you have been around from the baptism of John, you are mighty old. So you had to have been around from the baptism of John onto the same day that he, Jesus, was taken up from us. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? And 23 said, and they appointed two, Joseph called uh, Basibus, whose surname was Justus and Matthias. So you, do you see the qualification of an apostle? The qualification is that they, that an apostle must have been with Jesus and the apostles in and out, beginning from the baptism of John. They must have witnessed, if you may, the baptism or them from the ministry of John all, all the way up to the time Jesus was resurrected. Friends, our appeal is for us to go back to New Testament Christianity. We are in a, we are in a state of religious chaos because individuals create doctrines for themselves. If we're going to be united in Christ, we have to go back to the principles of the Bible. We have to burn all of the manuals and creeds that man have written in the denominational world. We must kill it, friends. We must abandon it at all costs. At all costs. Out of 1 Corinthians. Now here we see the qualification of an apostle is that one must have been with Jesus. One must have seen Jesus. Now yes, J Jesus himself selected Paul. He selected Paul himself. But Paul said that his gospel was not given to him by man. It was given by Jesus Christ. He, mean, he meant that Jesus spoke with him directly. He didn't go to Jerusalem and consulted with the apostles. He, 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 he stayed in Damascus and then he went to Arabia. We see this in the book of Galatia, uh, of the Galatian book. He stayed, he, he spent a few years in Arabia, and he said that Jesus spoke to him himself. He said, this, this gospel I received, I didn't receive it of man. If you call yourself an apostle, 
the gospel that you have, where did you receive the gospel? Now, I know the gospel is written in the Bible by the apostles given to us for posterity. But the question is, if you are an apostle, where did you get your gospel from? I know where the apostles got their gospel from. The true apostles, they got their gospel directly from Jesus Christ. They serve as witness. Every one of them serve as witness to the risen Savior. Even Paul, because Paul said he was the last one to see the resurrected Jesus. So every apostles had laid their physical eyes upon the resurrected Jesus. So friends, if you are an apostle or you know an apostle, I would like to meet him. He must be pretty old. We can go into 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll commence at verses 28 and 29, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 28, 29, 28, and God had set some in the church first apostle. Now, God has set some first in the church apostles. God has done this. God selected the apostles to be in the church, and he set them first in the church, okay? And it went on to name the other other areas that God has, uh, um, the offices that God has set up in the church. But the point is, God has set up, this is an office, friends. This is an office. And if there is an office, there must be specific qualifications. 29, Paul asked the questions, the question rather, are all apostles? And the answer to that question is absolutely no. All are not apostles. So the question is, who made you? Or who made you? Others are there to be an apostle. You must have been selected by God. You must have been selected by God. It's an office in the Lord's church. It's an office, friends. Also, out of Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, it said out of uh, verses 11 and 12, and he gives some apostles. The question is, are all apostles? The answer is absolutely no. And he gives some apostles. And then we drop down to verse 12. For the, perfect, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Friends, thus far on this morning, I've covered briefly the, the definition of an apostle, one who was sent. And we look briefly at the qualification of an apostle. It tells us that one, had must, one must have been with Jesus. That means one must have laid his eyes on Jesus. From beginning from the ministry of John, all the way up to when he was resurrected. All 12 apostles who were named in Acts chapter 1, they have laid their eyes on the resurrected Savior. So the first qualification is one must have seen Jesus with his own eyes. And I'll reiterate, we have some mighty old or some mighty ancient folks running around here who have seen Jesus, but yet they are so private. They are so private. I think if those who have seen Jesus would have been perhaps even a news media would have been interested in seeing these folks to get a firsthand account, to, to, get, to get the witness account of those who have seen Jesus. Friends, they are those who are trying to bamboozle us to cause us to lose our souls. And we are to move away from such teachings. Now, Lord's will, uh, I'll present to you the, the characteristics of an apostle. The characteristics. And, as, and these characteristics are akin 
to the qualification thereof. And if we're not meeting these qualifications and characteristics, friends, there is false teaching going on among us, and it needs to be exposed. It needs to be exposed. It often puzzles me that individuals are so careful about every other aspect of their lives. If individuals are sick, they go to the doctor, they take the advice of the doctor, and they follow, if they are within reasonable mind, they follow the instruction of the doctor. Whenever one attempts to buy a house, one searches the necessary information to help him or help him to be qualified to buy this house or car or whatever. But when it comes to religion, friends, we we toss all re all, all all reasons and, and and logics out of the window. We listen to the testimony of individuals instead of going back to the divine word that God has given us. We just take these individuals at their words. We have to go back to the Bible. We have contracts in our community, contracts in our society. In fact, this nation is binding under a contract called the Constitution. And we are very careful. We are very careful to guard against, uh, to, to guard against those who, 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 who impose upon our constitutional rights. But friends, when it comes to, when it comes to religion, we close the book. We close the book, friends. I encourage you to, to join me next week, Lord's will, as we continue this, the, 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 the spiritual quest or the biblical answer to the question on the qualification, definition, and characteristic of an apostle. We thank you so much for your, for your, your, for your patience. This is Dathan Bodie with Prove All Things. I am the minister. Um, at the Church of Christ that meets in Rockingham, we cordially invite you to, to come out and to, to be with us. And if you want to come and observe the way we worship, the way we approach um, the, the, the sanctity of, of worship to God, the way we, we, we honor and uplift the Bible, please come by and, and visit with us. Come by. Uh, we are located on 1013 Wild Cherry Avenue right across the street from Godfather's Pizza and diagonally from Family Dollar. We are so pleased that you join us this morning. May God bless you. You've been listening to Prove All Things with Dathan Bodie. Join us again next Sunday morning at 7 a.m.